Hey, you uh, blender people. I just wanted to do a tutorial on how to do a double helix uh, spiral, a perfect one, using the phi ratio. And I'm not going to go into that because I don't understand it <laughs> exactly. I know it's, it's, I don't know, what the hell, I, it's hard to explain what it is. I don't know enough about it to explain it. But, um, turns out that the DNA, DNA follows it. The dimensions of this helix will be 21. That's between either spiral. It's a double helix. There's two of them. Um, and it will be 34 units high from crest to crest. And this is really simple. Um, first, I am going to create a circle. Mesh, circle. Don't change anything, just leave it how it is. All right. Now we are going to in, enter into edit mode because we, we it's important that we keep our see this little dot thing. Let me turn this thing off. This little dot thing. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to need that later. That is the origin. If I move this, you see how the orange dot goes with it? That's moving its origin. Um, and we need that origin to stay at the center. So, let's escape, okay. When you enter into edit mode by pressing tab, that takes you into edit mode. When you move now, it stays there. See, it's not following it. And that's important for what we're gonna do, this modifier we add. So, what we are gonna do is move this. You see these uh, squares? These are the units that I'm using. Now, by default, when you add a shape, it's usually two units. See how it's one, two two units, is one blender unit. Um, this grid is like a half a unit or some shit, I don't know. But, so what I've done is um, I've divided all my numbers in half. So I'm going to move this 10.5 units to the left here on the y-axis and that will equal out to 21 units when I've added my other spiral. So I just grab this by pressing G, oh, you know what, let's just do it really precise. Of course we need to do it precise. See the Y up here, it says transform Y. Just click on that and push, type in 10.5, enter. See, and it grabs it, throws it right there. It's, you know, laser precise, it's perfect. Okay, so we close that. Now we are going to rotate by pressing R and then press Y to constrain it to the Y axis and press 90 and then enter to confirm. All right, and we're gonna do that because it's going to spiral and we want our spiral to be circular and all that crap. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, now we add our modifier, real simple. Modifier is a screw modifier. We add that and it looks crazy now, but we're gonna fix it. Okay, steps. This will make it rounder. You see what it's doing? How it goes really nice. All right, so we just get it round enough. It really doesn't matter, this one right here. This is what it will look like rendered. Okay, so I put that one at 100, which is roughly twice what I do in here. Now you're gonna get this little, see this line thing? That's from the normals getting all screwed up. Don't worry about those if you don't know what they are. All you need to know is check that and it fixes it. Okay, now this number here, screw, is, see it raises it up and down. So I'm going to put that one at zero for now. And this is how we're going to get our crest to crest uh, measurement. Because I can't get this grid, I know there's a way to make the grid work up and down, but I, I haven't figured it out yet. All I did was create a plane, space, and I've got my dynamic space bar menu add on on that's why I always press space to add things you can just press shift a and that does the add thing just add a plane oh shit um control z I need to enter back into object mode by pressing tab add a plane which is two units long and our height is going to be 34 units so what we need to do is scale this thing 17 times larger. So we'll press S and 
hold on, let me find, I forgot which, uh, where my, all my shit was. Let me press this up so I can see, okay. So we'll do this on the Y axis. Scale by pressing S, Y to constrain it, and then type in 17, which is half of 34, and press enter to confirm. All right, let's go back to this guy and put him at zero. All right, I just like keeping things tidy. And we'll click on this, rotate on X, on the X axis, 90 degrees. Press enter. Make sure everything's cool. All right, now we are going to grab this along the Z axis. First, we're going to go into press one, uh, press Z. And I just like to put this down so I can see my my grid. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this up so I can see where my grid is. Uh, press one to go into front view. Actually, I didn't really even need to do that. Um, zero enter. See this red line? That is dead center of the screen on either side, that red line. So I'm going to select this, press G to grab, Z to constrain it, and then hold control to snap it at every unit until it gets to right there in the center. Okay, there we go with that. Now I need to see where this thing is at. It's right there. All right, so now I'm going to grab this and move it along Y grab G Y to constrain control to snap it and it's going to snap right into the center it doesn't have to be in the center this direction in the Y axis but it does in the Z axis and that's why we snapped it up to the grid which is dead center of this thing all right so press Z go back to solid mode or uh, solid view uh, I forget what it's called Okay, and what we need to do is get the center of this top one to match up right there on that line. And how we do that is we'll, enter, we'll press 1 to go into front view. Let's zoom in here. Oh, look at that. Look at our grid. All right, uh, so here's our grid. Anyway, and we are going to ch change this number until we get right about where we want to go and I've done this before so I'm going to type 34 and that is the center you see how we're right see this line I mean this thing is like right on the grid perfect look at that okay so this is perfect that is how I got my thing now that I know that you just have to be in orthographic mode to see your grid probably could have done it another way much easier but this is how I chose to do it. Okay, so we can delete this now. We don't need it. Now we have our perfect, this is perfectly accurate to DNA. All right. And now all we have to do to, to make this go on is to just change our iterations. See? And you can make this as long as you like. You know, wow, it can go forever. Um, let's put it two. Shall let's do it four. All right, and then to make your other side of this, you just press Shift D to duplicate, press R to rotate, Z to constrain it, and then type in 180. Enter, and that is a perfect helix for DNA. That is perfect now it may also kind of like bend and stuff I don't know but uh, there you go that is how to do a spiral damn near that's perfect and then once you've got your thing and it's all perfect and everything you can press you can get them and scale them down so that a little more manageable for taking pictures zero to enter into camera view shift F to take control there and I really ought to stop using the hotkeys. What do y'all think? Because uh, it's kind of daunting to new people when you're just spitting out hotkey after hotkey after hotkey. Um, <clears throat> I should just use the menus. It's easier to, you know, 
And the view, you can always change it by this right here. See, I'm in camera view. I want to go into front view. Front view. I want to go back into camera view. Camera view. Oh, set it to active camera. There you go. F12 to render. And there it is. It's pretty. And you got your render settings over here. You can, I always dither one pixel. It's not important. But it takes care of some problems you get sometimes. Um, my dimensions, turn that up. F12 it. It's bigger. Pretty. Uh, okay, well, there it is. I'll, I mean, I'll do another video where I add uh, the markers, the whatever those things are called, those little lines that go between it. Uh, as soon as I find some representation that I. Uh, that I can easily copy or something in Blender. But that is how to do a perfect spiral. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, subscribe, whatever, dude. Uh, so, have fun.